What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Madden Ballers YouTube channel and our Georgia State Panthers Dynasty and NCAA Football 14. Before we get into this week's game, we'll take a look at the top 25 polls. You can see Alabama 1, Ohio State number 2, and the big upset of the week was Georgia losing to number 5 Clemson 31 to 10. We also have TCU rounding out the top 25 there. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the Heisman watch here. We have all quarterbacks here. Johnny Manziel, A.J. McCarron, Braxton Miller, Teddy Bridgewater, and Marcus Morate. So let's get into week two of the Georgia State Dynasty. We are at home facing off against FCS East Howlers. Coach Chip Nolan is looking for his first win of his college football career. And you can see these two teams are pretty much even as far as the talent and offense and defense and overall. So this should be a pretty close game. So let's send it down to the field and get this game started. Hubbard is out to kick off for Georgia State and back at the five yard line is Parks to return this kick. He's going to take the kickoff past the 20, break a tackle. He's past the 30 and he's finally taken down at the 37 yard line. First and 10 for the Howlers. Kurt Patrick's in the shotgun. He'll take the snap, and he's going to take off on his own up the middle, and he's going to get hit hard and gain seven yards on that QB keeper. You see he faked the pass there and took off up the middle and gained seven yards and hit, was hit pretty hard there at the end. Second and three now. Kurt Patrick in the shotgun. He'll take the snap, look for a receiver, and he's going to get hit pretty hard and fumble the ball, and John Kelly will pick that one up for the Panthers. And the Georgia State Panthers have the ball in Howler territory. As you look at the replay here, number 92 came off his man and dislodged that ball from Kurt Patrick, and John Kelly picked it up. And it's first and 10 for the Georgia State Panthers deep in Howler territory as Kurt Patrick comes off the field, disappointed in himself. First and 10 now. Ben McLean comes out onto the field under center. He's going to hand off to Gerald House. House is up the middle for four yards, setting up second and six. On second down, McLean under center. He will hand off again to House, who will go right side, and he will go up the middle there at the end and gain enough for the first down, first and 10 for the Panthers. Second and eight now, Ronnie Bell's in at quarterback. He's going to take the handoff pitch to House. House is going to go up the middle on the left-hand side and gain five yards. Third and five, Ben McLean's out back on the field for quarterbacking, and he's back to pass. He's going to fire and hit Albert Wilson for the first down catch inside the 10-yard line. It's first and goal for the Panthers. On that first and goal, McLean out of the shotgun. He'll drop back to pass, fire over the middle, and that one is deflected by Andy Davis. A nice deflection there. Could have been intercepted, but... Otherwise, a nice play on defense. Third and goal, McLean out of the shotgun. He'll pass over the middle to Albert Wilson, and he's taken down short of the goal line. That would set up a short field goal attempt by Georgia State. The kick is up and is good, and Georgia State's up 3 to nothing. Late first quarter now, the Howlers are punting. Keaton Hill back to return. He'll take this return inside the 20, and he takes this one up the middle to the left-hand side, and a nice 23-yard return by Keaton Hill there. And that's where Georgia State will start this drive. First and 10 now. McLean's going to fake the handoff. Drop back to pass. Fire deep for Drew Pearson. And Pearson has that catch at the 35-yard line. First down, Panthers. First and 10 as McLean comes out onto the field. Under center, he'll take the ha snap. Handoff to House. House goes right side. Back up the middle for five yards. That sets up second down and five. Third and two now in this drive for the Panthers. McLean under center. He'll hand off to House up the middle. He will have the first down and wait. There's a penalty on the play. It is going to be a 15-yard face mask penalty, and that would end the first quarter as Georgia State is ahead 3 to nothing over FCS East. Georgia State's drive continues here to start the second quarter. They have the ball at the Howlers' 11.5 yard line. McLean will drop back to pass, fire quickly to Albert Wilson, and that is a 10 yard reception, setting up second and inches on the next play. 
Big lane under center. He'll hand off to Gerald House, and House is up the middle for the touchdown. And the Georgia State Panthers add a touchdown to the board, and they are ahead now 10 to nothing. And Hubbard will kick off for Georgia State. Back deep is Parks at about the six and a half yard line. Here we turn this one past the 20, cut it outside, break a tackle past the 40. He's past midfield, stiff arms the defender and is taken down at the 45 yard line. So first and 10, Kirkpatrick is going to hand off to Johnson. Johnson's gonna go left side and get met in the backfield for a two yard loss. That sets up a third and 13 later on the drive. Kirkpatrick out of the shotgun, dropping back, dumps it off on the screenplay. Johnson is going to get one yard on that screenplay, and the FCS East Howlers would have to punt on that punt. Keaton Hill's back to return at the 15. He's going to take this one, cut it right side, and get the corner past the 30, and kicked out of bounds there at the 35-yard line. So first and 10 now for the Georgia State Panthers. Ronnie Bell's in, and he is going to take this one himself and get met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that play. Second and 10. Bell back to pass. He'll fire over the middle. That one's caught by Albert Wilson, and he is near midfield, and the Panthers have a first down. First and 10. Bell under center. He'll hand off on the delay to House. House is up the middle for seven yards. A nice rush by House there. Second and three now. Bell's in the shotgun. He'll take the snap. He will take this one himself, and he is going to get hit hard and fumble the ball. But luckily, Danny Williams, the wide receiver, was there to pick this one up as you look at the replay here. Bell needs to learn how to carry that ball if he's going to rush on his own there so he is secure in his hands. Third and three now for the Georgia State Panthers. Bell under center. He will hand off to House, who goes up the middle. He's going to get the first down and more, and he's taken down after a nine-yard gain, and there's a flag on the play. It is going to be a face mask, and that would add on 15 yards to the end of that run. So it's first and 10 from the 18-yard line. Bell dropping back to pass now. He's looking for the end zone. He hits Albert Wilson. He's trying to push into the end zone, but he's taken down at the two-yard line. First and goal, Georgia State. Second and goal now, Bell under center. He will take the snap. He's going to hand off to House. House is going to go left side, up the middle, into the end zone for his second touchdown of the day. And Georgia State is ahead 17 to nothing. And that is how the first half would end. Georgia State 17, FCS East 0. We played 30 minutes. Glad to have you with us on the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 Halftime Show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. David Pollock and I here in the studio to break down everything that just happened in your game. It's usually just something that a coach writes on the board. No big plays. But typically when you have offenses like these, you get a few big plays. Uh, what do you think the defense has done so well in terms of taking away those long plays? Well, that's always your goal coming into a game is you want the offense to drive the length of the field and make them put together third down, you know, explosive, or make them put together third downs and make them get short yardage. Really just you're okay with them eating up the clock and just not getting explosive plays and big, long touchdowns. And, and that's your goal. How do you do it? you got to just limit the damage. Sometimes you're going to give up that 10-yard play. You make a tackle, you wrap it up, and get back in the huddle. Sometimes you're going to give up a big run. Wrap them up. Don't let them get – don't let them score a touchdown. So you always want to make an offense drive the length of the field and earn everything they get. And so far in the first half, that's what they've done. We've done what we can do here at halftime. Time to get you back out to the second half. We'll keep an eye on everything going on in college football. Brad Nessler and Kirk Herbstreet ready with a call. Georgia State will receive the kick to start the second half. Back at the one-yard line is Keaton Hill. He will take this return up past the 10-yard line. Cut it left past the 20, past the 25, taken down at the 27-yard line. So on first and 10, Ben McLean will fake the handoff, drop back to pass. He's going to fire deep right, and that one is incomplete, intended for Danny Williams. Second down and 10 now. McLean or center, he will hand off to Gerald House. House will cut it left up the middle and get about 12 yards in that rushing play. But wait, there's a flag on the play, and there will be offensive holding on that one. That would set up second and 17. McLean under center, dropping back to pass now on second and 17. Passes over the middle to Drew Pearson for 12 yards. That's going to set up a short third down and five. Under center, McLean dropping back to pass. He's going to fire for Albert Wilson, and Wilson's going to drop that pass. That would have been a first down, and the Panthers would have to punt. 
after Howlers three and out. The Panthers have good field position with the ball at the 49-yard line of the Howlers. Ben McLean's going to pass deep, and that one's caught by Joel Ruiz for a 22-yard reception, setting up first down at the 24-yard line. On first and 10, McLean back to pass. He is going to get sandwiched for a sack there. As we look at the replay here, you'll see that Ben McLean became a Howlers sandwich there and got sacked on the play for a big loss. Third and 17 now, McLean out of the shotgun. He'll drop back to pass and he will get sacked again for the second time on this drive. A nine yard loss and the Panthers would go ahead and punt the ball as you look at the replay here. And the third quarter would end with the Georgia State Panthers ahead 17 to nothing. The Howlers start with the ball to start the fourth quarter. Kirkpatrick in the shotgun. He'll take the snap. Looking to pass. He's going to take off on his own up the middle. And he will get tackled after a nine-yard gain. Second and one for the Howlers. Back to pass is Kirkpatrick. He's going to fire deep. And that one is overthrown incomplete. Setting up third down and one on that third down. Kirkpatrick in the shotgun. He's going to take off on his own and get sacked in the backfield for a three-yard loss. And the Howlers would have to punt. Georgia State takes over towards midfield. McLean back to pass. He fires over the middle. That one's caught by Albert Wilson for the first down. That sets up first and 10. McLean back in the shotgun again on first and 10. He's back to pass. Dumps off on the screen play. And that would be caught by House. But he will lose four yards on the screen play as it was defended very well. Third and 13 now. McLean back to pass. He's going to fire deep, and that one is incomplete. Deflected by Bill Barry, and the Georgia State Panthers would punt. Later on in the fourth quarter, Howlers have the ball back. Kirkpatrick takes a snap, goes up the middle on his own, has the first down and more taken down at the 40-yard line. First and 10 FCS East. On the next play, Kirkpatrick takes the snap, fires quickly to Little. Little has the catch, and he is down after a five-yard reception. Third and five now. Kirkpatrick in the shotgun. Drops back to pass. Fires off on the screen play to Johnson. Johnson's up towards the first down marker, but he is one yard short. And FCS will come out on fourth down to go for it as they are still down 17-0. And Kirkpatrick will take this one himself, break a couple tackles, but finally get taken down for a one-yard loss. And that would be a turnover on downs here. Georgia State takes over. All they need to do is get a couple... First downs and this game is over. First and 10, hand off to House, up the middle for four yards. That sets up second and six. Later on in the drive, it's third and nine. McLean back to pass. He's gonna fire deep, and this one's gonna be picked off by Lewis. Lewis will pick this one off at about the 10 yard line and return it to about the 20. And the FCS East Howlers have another shot to get some points on the board. Kirkpatrick will get sacked for a seven yard loss on first down. Second and 17 now for the Howlers. Kirkpatrick in the shotgun, dropping back to pass. He is gonna fire incomplete towards the sideline there. Third and 17 now. They need to get a first down here to keep this drive alive. Kirkpatrick back to pass, fires over the middle and that one is dropped by Little. And that would end up being their last play. They would punt, Georgia State takes over. Ronnie Bell in the game now just to run out this clock. He takes the QB keeper for five yards. Next play, second and five. Bell will take the snap. He will look. He will scramble, and he is up the middle. He has the first down, and he is down at about the 33-yard line. 19 seconds left in the game, second and 10. Bell will take off on the QB keeper, and he will get no gain on that play. That would end this game. Georgia State is going to hang on to shut out FCS East. Theo Agnew is your player of the game. Four tackles, two for loss, two sacks, and a forced fumble. And Georgia State is going to take this game in the Georgia Dome with a final score of 17 to nothing over FCS East.
So as we look at the stats from today's game, Georgia State dominated time possession and only gave up 37 total offensive yards to FCS East. So that is why they dominated this game. Looking at the players of the game, Gerald House on offense for Georgia State, 19 carries, 46 yards, and two touchdowns. Theo Agnew, your player of the game, with those two sacks and a forced fumble. Georgia State dominates on defense and beats FCS East 17-0, improving their record to 1-1 one one on the season. Come back for the next episode when we take on the West Virginia Mountaineers on the road. Until then, we'll catch you guys in the next video.